Hi, Dr. Nick Dalton here, and I want to talk to you about the assessment and the assessment process. I want to answer all people's popular questions and uh, get you ready so you can start doing the first assessment. So let's begin. Um, so we're going to cover what the assessment is, how to use the automated assessment system, and finally, if you've never used Excel, important information for you about how to do the assessment. So let's begin. What is the assessment? In this course, there are five assessments. They're numbered one to five, surprisingly enough. Uh, in order to pass the course, you must pass four of them. And it doesn't matter which four you pass. So you can pass the first four and then not bother even doing the fifth. If, for instance, you have an illness or a, a problem during number three, then don't worry, you can still pass number five. Uh, and again, if you miss out on the first assessment, um, you can then just skip to assessments two, three, and four, and five. No problem. You need to pass four out of five. There is no averaging going on. You need to pass them or not pass them. Each assessment has a pass or fail mark of 40%, which is standard across the university. So let's look about how to use the automatic assessment system. If you go to Blackboard now or very soon, you will notice that uh, there is a, a folder marked assessment. Inside the assessment folder, there is uh, the assessment one, which has gone from being a marker to being uh, a proper assessment. You will notice there's two elements in that, the first one of which is the assessment PDF and the second one of which is the download automatic assessment document. If you download it and unzip it, you will discover you need uh, processing to open up. This is proper processing now. Uh, when you open up in proper processing. So problem number one is people just kind of double click on it and then double click on the PDE. Do not do that. Use an unzipping tool to uncompress the entire folder into your uh, desktop machine or your laptop machine uh, or the machine at the university. Um, and then we're going to move forwards now and actually look at this in action. So if I just get rid of this. So let me just go on to Blackboard. So here we go. Here's the assessment. Here's the assessment process. Um, let me actually do that again. Click on assessment. You'll go view assignment. Now you notice there that you've actually got unlimited number of attempts. So you can upload and re-upload, which we'll be covering in a moment, your final assessment to Blackboard. So let's assume you've downloaded the assessment PDF and you've downloaded the assessment code. And here is the, another one. Um, so this isn't your code. This is one from last year. You'll see it's very similar. Um, the first thing you need to do is you need to change uh, your name. When it says my name, you need to type in your name here. Now, a surprising number of students failed to do that and they lost a lot of marks doing it. The next thing you need to do is you need, you need to change this to your student ID. And again, a lot of students failed to type in their student ID. Or if they did, they typed it in here like this. So what you need to do is get rid of all this and replace it with your student ID like that. So that's properly formatted. Um, the next thing to do is to then to begin to look at the questions. Uh, now, if you look at your assignment, it's all here like that. So it's the same sort of thing, same setup. Uh, once you've typed in your name and your user ID, you can then move forwards. Um, you can always begin with question number one. Uh, and let's have a look at what question number one says. Uh, here we go. Here's question number one. And it says the function HW1Q1, that's that one, takes a, f a single float feet and represents a number uh, a single float feet representing a number of feet and returns a float representing the number in meters. Write code that converts meters to feet. The conversion factor for meters to feet is thing. Now, this question is designed to be very simple to begin with. So all we have to do here is to go uh, return feet times 0 0.3048. Uh, now, you might be thinking that's a very simple question. Um, if you've done A-level computer science, you'd be rolling your eyes at this stage. But the important thing is to get you used to using this system. And again, we'll come to uh, a group of important people who might find this a bit tricky. Once you've done one question, 
you can actually see if it works. So we run it. And if you look at the bottom of the screen down here, you can actually see uh, it tells me that the mark is correct. So basically here I can actually see if the question is wrong, correct or incorrect. Now, supposing I made a mistake, uh, whatever. If we look at the output here, it says, no, I've got it wrong and I need to fix it. So there we go. Uh, and there we have it, it's working. So all you need to do is work your way through the questions. There is one special question inside this this year. Let's just go to the real one for a second. And that is this one. There is one special question. If I run this one, you'll notice your version is slightly different because of question I. So here you can actually see what your total mark is currently, and you can even see the total time left. Now, don't trust this as the actual time, um, but it's a rough guide to how much time you've got left to do, actually do the assignment. Let's just pop along to question I, because it's the only one that's not like the other questions. So question I is a robot question. So in the robot question, you're now in control of a robot. So this should be fairly familiar from, from before. You control the robot by it writing commands, just like you did in the pseudocode, but this time uh, using code. So if I run this one now, you'll see the robot has begun on the red spot and we need to get to the other red spot. So what we're now going to do is go robot dot forward. There we go. And these are all the commands the robot understands. Uh, forward, turn left, turn right and dig. OK, and if we then run it again. You've noticed that I've got two marks just for getting off the starting point. So of course you need a lot of code. So let's just do one more line. I'm going to go turn left. So there you go. There's turning left. Stop. Let's turn left. And let's go forward again, just for the sheer sake of it. So this is just like the pseudocode exercise you get. Now, I must say with this question, there's only one slight problem. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. There you go. Um, there's only one slight problem, which is everybody gets a different world. So for example, supposing I change my name. You'll notice this world is completely different from the previous one. So everybody gets their own unique pattern to get through. Okay, so let's assume you've gone all the way through the exercises and you've got your result. How do you actually submit your result? Well, the first thing you need to do is to scroll down to the bottom. And the first thing you need to do here is in this code here, you'll see there is the cheat sum. So this basically is just your name, your mark and your mark here. Uh, and uh, you'll see that that mark will just become this mark. The next thing you need to do is you need to um, drag your code into this f file here. Save. There you go. That's that done. And finally, and this is this is if you want feedback, you need to go back to your robot question and you need to cut and paste your robot question here. Okay, and that's if you want to get feedback. Um, the machine will give you feedback as you go along, but if you want sort of uh, other feedback about your commenting and style and etc., you can put that in here. Okay, so when you've done that, you can hit submit, submit, and there you go, I've submitted that thing. Now, I can actually view the assignment again and I can actually uh, do another question and then put in a new answer here. So I've got another assessment. Now, what you'll find is the first questions are fairly straightforward. 
Uh, but as we move forwards, they get slightly harder and harder. And the, first, the final question is slightly more taxing. Now, remember, the machine will tell you when you've hit 40 marks. 40, uh, yeah, uh, 40 marks, 40 out of 100 or 40 percent. Um, and it's fine if you really want to to stop there. I actually find that a lot of students really enjoy this and they actually want to get 100 percent. And you can get 100 percent uh, just by going through and keep going until you actually reach the end. Um, uh, so you can do that um, and you will get that mark back to you. Uh, so I would recommend doing to 40% and uploading and then carrying on past 40% and uh, uploading when you're finished. Um, so that way you're guaranteed to get a mark and if you happen to go over the time limit trying to fill that last one, you're done. Um, uh, again, I would definitely, 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 definitely recommend that you seriously take this um, and do this as quickly as possible, as early as possible. Um, people often underestimate the difficulties of programming. Uh, you definitely need to engage with programming and you nef definitely need to uh, start, uh, start as soon as possible. Um, a lot of people really enjoy this and I've had a huge amount of very positive feedback and a lot of pulled hair because, of course, this is Java and you're learning Java. Now, there's a couple of things to kind of point out here. Let's just move on to the next section. Yeah. There's a couple of things to point out here. Um, each of these are technically known as a method or a function. We'll be covering that later on. You don't really have to worry about it. And we've seen these already with set up and draw. Um, uh, each of these just represents a question the machine asks and you give it an appropriate answer. Um, so uh, the interesting thing here is return. If you've ever used a spreadsheet uh, and you typed equals, that's the same as return. It says, give me the answer. So a return basically says, so uh, uh, mother, the automated marking system, return the answer to uh, mother from checking. So this is giving back, return it gives back. And it can be uh, any formula here. Or, you know, if you really wanted to, you can actually go float result result equals that semicolon and then you can return the result now what's nice about this is you can do this in any way you like you know you could actually go 3.4 times feet if you wanted to we don't care about how you achieve the results. Now, this is an important step forward because uh, when you're working in industry and when you're working for real with really important projects, the first thing you do is you write what's known as a unit test. And a unit test is software that tests the software. And then what you do is you write code and it gets checked by the software. So this process of having an external system for checking that your code is working is just like you would if you were writing good code. So it's trying to encourage you to do an excellent coding style to begin with. It can be slightly frustrating if you uh, get things wrong. But again, this is about trying to uh, achieve a perfect result from an imperfect human being. So there will be a little work applied. OK, so we've done the process. We've done how to uh, do the assignment and we've done the process of cutting and pasting the mark into the thing. I've only got one final thing left. Um, how to, uh, if you've never used Excel, important information. If you've ever used Excel before, the next section is largely irrelevant, but it's very important in terms of doing the kind of operations we're gonna be doing in the assessment. Uh, the reason I'm talking about this is because uh, I often get many students um, um, in sort of week six or week seven, and you say, okay, write in uh, return, uh, you know, print line, print line, um, four by five, multiply four by five. And the first thing they will do is they'll uh, multiply, multiply. Right, let's go add four, add five. And you ask, say, type in four, multiply by five, and they type that in. And they go, 
oh, professor, it's not working. It's like, ah, oh, well, yeah, you need to use numbers. So they go, okay, you go four and five. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Four and five, no. And, like, um, and then you go, I oh, need to use a symbol. That's fine, four plus five. Okay, fine, great. Oh, and now it works and it comes out. And they go, oh, God, isn't Java so hard? Because I typed in four add five and it didn't work. But if I use this plus symbol, it was does work. That's so frustrating. And then later on, you say multiply four by five and they type in this. And it goes, oh, uh, oh what's going wrong? Uh, it's not working. And it's kind of like, and then, then, you know, obviously in the real labs, we could look over your shoulder and go, ah, OK, there's a problem here. Because if you want to multiply a number together on a computer, you use star, which is shift eight on the average keyboard. And this uh, then multiplies four by five. Now, if you've ever used Excel, that's not going to be a problem. And as you can see down here, the result is 20. So this works properly. And equally, for division, you don't use divide. That won't work. What you use is slash. And again here, and if you notice here, I've done four divided by five, and this is integer numbers. But if I do um, 40.1 divided by five, I'll actually get a fractional number out. And that's because if you say four divided by five, well, you know, you can't divide four by five in a round number, so that's zero. If you do, if you do six by five, it rounds it to the nearest integer. If you want to do a fractional number, six, you need to put the decimal point in. And then it goes, oh, you're using decimal points. Now I can give you a more accurate answer. So there's a difference between integer numbers and decimal numbers. So that can be a bit of a gotcha in the thing. So let's just go through all the sort of symbols you're likely to need. So the first line is uh, four plus five. 4 plus 5, and let's get rid of that one. That works. This plus symbol works. Print line 4 times 5. So now we're using the asterisk for multiplication. And that works. And that works across the board. It'll even work in Google. So now we can do the next one um, for minus 5. And it gives you minus one. And if you need a minus number, by the way, like just minus five, you can put a dash in front of it. So again, dash is a minus symbol. So let's go back to four minus five. And finally, print line uh, four uh, divided by five. I'm going to do 4.0 divided by 5.0, just so we get a semicolon. And there's that. There we go. Now. If you've ever used a calculator, you're used to calling functions on a calculator. So you would sort of type in like, if you want to do the, you know, the square root of four, you type in four and then press the square root button. Now, again, what you do inside processing as you would do inside uh, square root, inside Excel is you'd put in, you'd use what's known as a function. So basically that's the name of the command the function you want to do, you give it an argument. We'll be covering this in great detail later. And then you basically, that that will then return the square root of four. There we go. And that prints out two. And again, we can put that into a variable, float. Um, this, think of a word, any word, uh, let's call it S. Okay, S equals the square root, square root of four, okay. Um, there are a couple of other functions like that. There's log. That's the log of four. Uh, this is the exponent of four. So this is uh, e, uh, e to the power of four. Um, uh, log n. So log is... Ooh. So you can drive yourself crazy with all that kind of stuff. Um, so you will find when you're coming to do the uh, assessment that you will need to have these basic mathematical skills. You know, we're not expecting you to understand much about mathematics, 
Um, but you should be able to use a calculator and you should be able to get the machine to do the things. We've kind of assumed so far you understand what plus, minus, times, divide and stuff look like. But I just wanted to be sure because I know that a small percentage of you have never used Excel. I wanted to be 100% sure that you know how to enter a formula into a computer. And the good news is this will work on practically any system, uh, including things like if you do a Google search. So, yeah. Um, okay, great. Uh, that's that. Uh, thank you for listening and uh, good luck with your assessment. And I look forward to giving lots of feedback out.